Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is sag. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear sag used is to mean to sink or bulge downward under the weight of something or through a lack of strength. So with this first definition, if you can kind of picture in your mind a tree branch, right? And now imagine several kids starting to climb on it and the branch sort of sinks. We can use that verb to describe that action. The branch is sagging. It's kind of being pulled downward through the weight of, of the individuals climbing on it. A second way the verb sag gets used is to mean to hang down loosely or unevenly. Now, sometimes our clothes might do this. They hang down in a loose or uneven way. Uh, I know for some people, they might use this when they think of like tall socks and this idea of like you pull them up towards your knee, but as you're walking, they start to hang loosely or unevenly. And we might say that the socks are sagging. Okay. Now, sometimes people will talk and use this verb to describe their skin, especially as we age. A third way the verb sag gets used is to mean to temporarily decline to a lower level. So um, sometimes, and I know later in this video, you'll see some example sentences where I talk about sales or prices of something. And again, going to a lower a level or lower amount, we could use this verb uh, to describe that action. You should know that sag is a regular verb. When we go to spell our progressive and past tense forms of the verb, though, we are going to have a spelling change. And the reason for this is sag is a consonant vowel consonant word. And when I add suffixes that start with vowel letters like ing or ed, <clears throat> then I need to double that ending consonant. So to make the progressive form, you're going to see two g's and then the ing to form sagging. The past tense and participle forms, again, have that double G, so an extra G, before we add the ED ending. Now, the base verb, sag, g, g, ends in a voiced sound. This means that the ED ending is just going to make a D sound, and I'm not going to add an extra syllable as I say the word. It should sound like this, sagged, sagged. Now, we're going to take a quick look at a few phrasal verbs. The first one we'll discuss today is to sag away. This can have a couple different meanings. One might be to sink or settle or droop away from something else. An example of this might be, is the porch sagging away from the house? Right? So we might think of kind of a nice deck area where people might sit slowly starting to sink on, and maybe even become slightly disconnected from the house. Now, a second way you hear sag away is used uh, in connection to boats. And so <clears throat> generally what it means is uh, the boat is drifting continuously with the wind. An example of this might be with a broken rudder, the boat sagged away from the shore. So it started to drift away uh, from land. The last phrasal verb we'll discuss today is to sag down. This can also mean to sink, settle, or droop. And I think we, this <coughs> phrasal verb, particularly the particle down, um, is just another way really to stress how something is being pulled downward. It's a little bit redundant because it really goes back to our first definition of this verb. But an example sentence might be, the branch sagged down with the weight of the parachute. So here, uh, it sounds like a parachute has been caught, right? And those can be quite large and quite heavy. And if it's a light branch, right, it's being pulled down. Now, let's practice our verb of the day, sag, in a couple different verb tenses. Today, we'll practice the simple past tense and the present perfect progressive. Let's start with the simple past tense. 
We use this verb tense to talk about a completed action at a known point in the past. Many times in the simple past tense, we'll see time signals, words like yesterday or last month or even a specific date in the past. <coughs> okay, But you won't see that in every single simple past tense sentence. But it's a good indication um, as we're having a conversation or reading a longer passage. If we've seen a time signal indicating that past, we're going to kind of continue that same idea for telling a story or explaining something that happened on a particular uh, date or at a particular time. The nice thing about the simple past tense is that our structure is going to stay the same no matter what our subject is. So in the affirmative, I'm going to have my subject and then I'm going to have the ED form of my verb. You can see that in the example. The old bad sagged in the metal. Okay, maybe this has happened to you if you're having a really old mattress, right? It kind of bends or bulges downward. Um, and that can be kind of unpleasant, right? Not so comfortable to sleep in. Now, if you want to make a negative simple past tense sentence, what you're going to do is start with your subject, use did not, and then the base verb. You might also hear the contraction didn't, and then the base verb. Here's another example sentence. Voter turnout didn't sag in 2020. So here we're going to that third definition and saying voter turnout did not decline. If we want to make a yes or no question in the simple past tense to do this, I start with did, then I have my subject, and then the base verb. I always like to point out to my students, notice how in the negative and the yes or no question, I'm not adding the ed ending to my verb. I'm just using the base verb. Let's take a look at the last example I have here. Did the lining sag after the first time you wore it? So perhaps we're talking about a coat or something else that had a, a material covering the inside, lining the inside, right? And we're wanting to know. Um, maybe it wasn't very good quality, right? And it started to droop. Now, let's move on and talk a little bit about the present perfect progressive. Some teachers and textbooks will call this the present perfect continuous, and that's great. Uh, my students probably get annoyed uh, with how often I like to point out uh, that if you can help re help yourself remember present perfect progressive, having three Ps, it's going to help you remember you need three parts to make your verb. And present perfect progressive verbs are simply describing an action that started in the past and is continuing in the present. There might also be this likelihood it's going to continue into the future. To make affirmative present perfect progressive sentences, I need to pay attention to my subject. If my subject is I, you, we, or they, then my first part of my verb is have, then it's the participle been, B-E-E-N, and then it's the I-N-G form of the verb. If my subject is he, she, or it, then I'm going to use has, been, and the I-N-G form of the verb. Let's take a look at an example sentence. Sales have been sagging since the CEO made the controversial statement. So it's that idea of sales have been declining. They've been going down. Let's talk about making a negative present perfect progressive sentence. Again, we pay attention to our subject. Okay? Then we use either have not or has not. We could also use the contractions haven't or hasn't. We use the participle been, and then the ing form the verb. An example of this. The socks haven't been sagging. So again, we're kind of talking about that meaning of something hanging loosely, maybe not staying up uh, on one's leg. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the present perfect progressive. To do this, I start with have or has, whichever form matches my subject. That subject comes next. Then you're going to see the participle been, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. Has morale been sagging among teachers the last few years? Again, we're back to that, that meaning of something declining in amount here. So kind of our morale, our uh, 
feelings of, of making a difference, <coughs> having kind of a good attitude towards our work. Um, that's what we're talking about. And I think, unfortunately, the answer to this question is probably, yes, it has. Now, though, let's move on and talk about some words that are related to our verb sag. And the first word we're going to discuss today is the noun sag. So same spelling, same pronunciation. When I use sag as a noun, I might be talking about some downward curve in something that, again, is uh, could be caused by uh, a weakness, a lack of strength, um, maybe a heavy weight, or some type of pressure. An example of this might be, we need to fix the sag in the stairs. So if you can kind of imagine little steps having this downward curve, someone suggesting that needs to be fixed so that someone doesn't step through it uh, and fall and hurt themselves. <clears throat> a second way to use the noun sag is to talk about a decline, especially if we think that decline is just going to be temporary. An example of this might be, there's been a sag in stock price, right? Just another way to say the stock price has declined. Another related word we'll discuss today is the adjective saggy. This can also have a couple different meanings. So one might be that tending to sink or bulge downward under the weight or pressure of something else. An example of this might be, this couch is too saggy to be comfortable. So maybe this has happened to you where you sit down in something and it just feels like you sink right uh, down to the ground. That's what I picture when I read that sentence. A second way to use the adjective saggy is to mean something that's hanging down loosely. An example of this, does this cream help with saggy skin? So uh, I think, unfortunately, this adjective can have a really negative meaning, particularly when we're talking about clothing and our appearance. So be kind to yourself. Uh, I'm not going to ask anyone if you think I have saggy skin because I would be uh, uh, maybe a little afraid to have the answers. But I really appreciate you watching today's video, and I hope you have a great day.